Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Git Bisect. Git Bisect is a tool that I've been using a lot lately. It's something that I've shared with my entire team at work. It's really, really helpful for finding where a bug was introduced in a series of commits. So let's say you have 10 commits and you know that everything was working here and suddenly everything's not working and I don't know where a bug was introduced and you want to track it down. So let's go ahead and take a look at this example project that I have. So as you can see, I have a Git log over here, and this is my project. You can see I just have this Git bisect demo. And I have a bunch of commits. Going all the way to the bottom, I have this initial commit, and then I have a bunch of basically tests that I added. I added a bunch of test cases for all these different additions. Um, and I'll show you what that code looks like in a minute. But then all the way up here at the top on our headmaster, I've got this latest one, and this one is not working. So let's go and take a look at this. If I just go ahead and run cargo test, uh, here we go. So you can see there's all kinds of problems. Um, I have a bunch of failing tests. Basically, the entire application is broken, and I don't know why, what's wrong with it, where did we go wrong. That's what I'm going to try and solve here. Now, just to show you what this looks like, uh, basically, I have this teeny tiny Rust program. I have this add function. You probably see something wrong with it, but don't worry about that for right now. And then I have all of these tests down here, which are supposed to test that that add function works. Uh, some of them are passing, some of them aren't. Uh, the scenario I'm trying to emulate here is you have some library, you have a bunch of code in there, and you're writing tests and making them pass, and all of your developers, maybe you're contributing on your team, right? And everything is working great. And then suddenly one day you notice, oh, this doesn't work, uh, tests are failing. Um, and maybe the last commit doesn't work. Tests are also failing. So how do we step back in time or forward in time uh, from the working point to the not working point to figure out where things broke? So that's what we're going to use Git Bisect for. Now, Git Bisect in and of itself, really, really clever tool. Basically, you're doing a binary search over your commit history. You're going to chop the commit log in half, check out the commit in the middle, test it. Does it work or does it not work? Is it good or is it bad? And it's going to use your responses to that to then continue the binary search. It's going to have every single piece of history, basically, to go back and find the first commit where things did break so that you can fix it. So that's what we're going to use Git Bisect for. If you want to check out all the options and cool things it can do, check out the man page. But the simplest pieces that I use are what I'm going to show you today, the core functionality. So again, I have this git log. I have nothing new to commit. My working tree is clean. I have a failing test, right? We already took a look at that. And then here's my commit history over on this side. And we're just going to keep that open so we can keep an eye on it. Uh, so let's go ahead and start it. So you always start git bisect with git bisect start. And then it tells you it's waiting for both good and bad commits. So what it's looking for here is for you to tell it, this is the commit where things worked. And this is a commit that any commit where things worked. And then this is any commit where I know things do not work. Um, so let me go ahead and get open the main page over here again. And you can see the start good and bad. They have some synonyms for good and bad, like uh, I think broken and working are some of the synonyms that you can use. Um, basically, good, bad. Good is my code is working, bad is my code is not working. So for the sake of this demonstration, let's go ahead and say my current commit, my head, the top of my master branch, that's bad. So I say get bisect bad. OK, bad commit is known. Still waiting for a good commit. So now I need to go back into my history. I need to think, okay, where was my project last working? What's a known good point? Um, if you do releases, you could maybe look at some previous tag uh, the last time that you released and everything looked good. Uh, if you have a history of executing unit tests or you have some um, build pipeline that will tell you and report the results of your tests, you can go and look at that. But that's kind of the idea. You need to go back in your history and find, OK, what was the last good working commit? And I can do that here. Uh, just because I remember which commit it is, I'm going to go ahead and pick it myself. Uh, it should be uh, to do this one right here. So this 5 plus 10 equals 15. 
I know that this was the last time that my project worked. Now, again, the only way that you're going to know that is for your project. If you go and check out earlier points of time, maybe you have tags, maybe you have release branches, that kind of thing. But find any commit in your past history that looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that. We'll say git bisect good. And I'll paste that commit hash. OK, now we're bisecting. So you can see here we start with this prompt, two revisions left to test after this roughly one step. And it looks like we have this commit hash and this commit message checked out. And we can verify that with git status. So as you can see, we're running a detached head, basically git bisect, chopped our git log in half, and it went and checked out uh, this commit right here in our history. And as you can see, it's like, uh, four commits down from the top. I think I have eight commits total here. Yep, pretty much. So it, it picked what it thought. I have an odd number of commits, I guess, but it picked roughly right smack dab in the middle of our history. So it bisected our git log, checked out the commit in the middle, and now it's saying, okay, is this good? Does this work? We now, as a developer, need to test our code and tell git bisect if it's good or bad, so that it can continue bisecting through our history and we can find out what went wrong. So now we're in a detached state. Uh, we've checked out this earlier commit, right, where this change was made in our library. So let's take a look at that real quick. As you can see, we have a lot fewer tests in here than we did at the beginning. Uh, we do have this, uh, let me see, the commit that this is on was the 10 plus 100. So it looks like this test was the last one that was added at this point in history. That's fine. And we have tests, so we're going to actually run our tests and see if they pass. And we got an error. One of our tests failed. Actually, a couple of them failed. All three of these failed, and you can see why all of our assertion statements aren't working, right? So we know that this isn't a good spot. This is not a good commit. So we're going to tell git bisect to that, and it's going to continue the search. Basically, what it's doing with your input is figuring out do I search the earlier half of the history where I've bisected into, or do I search the later half? If it's still broken at this halfway point, you know that somewhere earlier in the, up the line, right, in your history, that's where things went wrong. It's not going to bother searching the whole later half um, because everything is presumably still broken after that point. So it's a binary search. So let's go ahead and tell it that this is a bad one because things still aren't working. And now it's going to continue, right? It's going to search for the next, it's going to continue its binary search, find the next commit that it can bring you. It's going to check that out. And this is the one that it's checked out. So you can see we're still bisecting. It's predicting how many checkouts you have left to find the problem. Uh, that number is usually based on just how many commits you have and how quickly it can search, it's kind of like your worst case scenario. Uh, and we have roughly zero steps left. So that means that based on our results from this commit, this is either the problem commit or the next commit that it wants to suggest is. That's just how many steps left we have. Uh, that's because I only have about eight or nine commits here. It was really quick to find one just because the number of steps for a binary search with those eight nodes isn't very big. If you had maybe 100 commits on a big team that you were looking through, it might take a few tests to actually figure out what went wrong. Let's go ahead and run our test here. And we're still getting failures. Unit tests are still not passing. So this is still a bad commit. We can tell git bisect that. And here you go. This commit hash is the first bad commit. Uh, and it even tells you what the message was, what files were changed, whether things were inserted or deleted. That's it. Now we know that this is the first bad commit. This is where git bisect, based on all of our testing, thinks that the error was introduced. I can go ahead and run my tests. We should not see them pass, right? We should see them fail because this is supposed to be the first bad commit. And if we look at our git log, this is where we are in the history, right? So our head is checked out to this 0 plus 0 equals 0. Uh, these commits all came before it. It thinks that these are all good commits and that this 39F1 is the first bad commit. That's the one that we need to be looking for issues at. Now, if you know your project well enough, your project is sufficiently small, or you can read the uh, git logs, right? Look at the changes that were made. You might just be able to immediately figure out, okay, what actually happened? What broke? 
Uh, and we can do that here. We can go and look in our library. Obviously, oh, and the other thing we can do is we can look at our, uh, uh, let me see. No, we can't run a git diff because we're checked out. But we can look at our source code here and we can see, okay, in our add function, obviously, we have left star right. That's going to be multiplication. It's not going to be an add. So even though this test that our developer added is passing, all these other tests are failing. Maybe the developer didn't run all of the unit tests and they just committed it and everybody's been building on top of that since. Now, one thing that I can do is I can run git show over here to see both my commit log and the difference. And you can see the change that was made that actually caused this problem, right? This line was replaced with this line. That's going to break things. That's going to make all my tests fail except for the new one that was added with zero, because zero times zero and zero plus zero are the same thing. Now, let's say that you didn't have that, or it wasn't as obvious to you what changes were made, because many, many changes are made from commit to commit. Hopefully, folks on your team are committing frequently, and they're committing really small changes, but that's not always the case. One thing that you can do is, after Bisect has told you the first bad commit, check out the first or the last good commit prior to the first bad commit and go ahead and cherry pick the changes from the breaking commit into it and look at the diffs and you can start slowly undoing changes until you make things work again. Uh, so let's do that here. Let's actually git bisect reset. We're going to undo all of our git bisect operations. We've switched back to master. If I look at the git log, right, we're all the way back up here again at this commit. But we know what we want. We know that this was our bad commit, making this our first or last good commit before our bad commit happened. So let's check out that commit. Okay, now we're here. If I run a git status, you can see that we're detached at this commit. If I do a cargo test, looks like this is our last known good commit because everything is running successfully. All of our tests are okay. And then if I go and look at our git log, right, we are here. We don't have any changes yet. Let's look at our git log for master branch as a whole. Let's go back down to the commit where things went wrong, right? This is the one that got spat out by git bisect. Let's go ahead and do a cherry pick. And we're going to say no dash commit. That's very important because what we want to happen here is we want our changes to stay um, uncommitted, and then we want to unstage them so that we can see this big giant diff and we can check out individual files, right? Git commit or git bisect rather only shows you the commit that was an error. It will not necessarily help you narrow down the files if there are many files or many changes within files inside of that commit. Let's go ahead and paste this. And if I do a git status, you can see I'm still at this detached head, right? I'm still at our last known good commit. But my, lib, my library has been modified. And if I get restore that, there we go. Now if I look at my diffs, I have all of these changes in here. Uh, these changes are being cherry picked in from a commit in the future, the known first bad commit, but they're not committed. They're unstaged. I can look at them inside of my diff here. And I can start testing things and figuring out where we went wrong. So let me go ahead and show my git diff over here. And let's go back into our library code. We have a couple of changes that we can test. So now if I want to, I can revert things one at a time. Uh, I can undo changes, add or remove files if there's a multiple module project, that kind of thing. But what I really want is to come in here and see, OK, that's obviously in error. I saw that that line was removed and that that line was added. If we undo that change and look at our git diff, right, we have undone that change in that file. Now the only thing that was changed was adding this test here. And then if I want to, I can run my tests again, cargo test, and all of my tests are passing. So I found the commit that introduced the issue using git bisect. I used git cherry pick, another tool that we weren't even going to talk about, but it's helpful to know to check out uh, or uncommit the files from the next commit in the history, the known first bad commit, so that I can look at those changes and compare them to what we knew was good. And one by one, I can revert those changes to see which actual change, which little piece of diff 
was the one that introduced the issue. So now that I know what the problem is, I can go back to my master branch and I can, well, <laughs> looks like I have to reset because I made all those changes in the wrong place, but I can check out my master branch. I can introduce a new commit or I can go and revert the known bad commit. And then I can uh, bring my project back to a working state. Uh, let's let's go ahead and show that actually, because I still have some time. So let's look at our git status. We're going to reset hard. We don't want to save anything. Look at our git status. We're still checked out. Let's get checked out. Uh, master. There we go. Now we're back uh, here in our git log all the way up at the top. And since we know what our first bad commit was, the zero plus zero equals zero, let's just say I want to undo those changes, send the patch back to the developer who implemented them, say, hey, here are the changes you made. Please fix them if you want to. Uh, go ahead and re-add them publish a new commit, but we're just undoing your changes for now. I can go ahead and say git revert, and I can provide the git uh, sum, checksum here, right, the hash. Uh, and I'm going to get a merge conflict in librs because I'm introducing a new commit, basically, for undoing the commit that the developer included previously. If I want to, I can go and fix that inside of my library. Uh, looks like I just have a couple of tests in here. Oh, yeah, I can't really tell the difference between all of my tests. So I'm doing this live. I didn't plan on doing this for this video, but I think it's helpful anyway. Let's see. looks like I got all of my unit tests in there. I'll go ahead and keep their unit test. That's all right. But I reverted the change that they made up top. So I can make sure that all my unit tests pass, right? Make sure I'm not going to introduce something that's broken. Looks pretty good. Look at my git diff. Doesn't look like a whole lot's changed there. Sounds pretty good to me. And then based on my uh, my merge resolution here, I need to go ahead and add my changes, and I need to say uh, git revert continue. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. And I'm introducing a new commit, which is going to reverse changes from previous. I do that, look at my git show, and you can see this is my revert commit up here that I'm on at the top of the master branch, and these are the changes that I undid. So I found the bug, found the commit with a bug, found out which changes inside of that commit were the error, and reverted them, and now my master branch is back in a working state. So really helpful and fast way to figure out what's wrong. Uh, again, if you have lots and lots of commits, it might take a few revisions of walking through your history to actually figure out what's up. Uh, but you don't get much faster than a binary search, really. Uh, it's an easy way of basically checking out history, testing it, checking out history, and testing it. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully you benefit from it. Thanks for watching.